League of Tomorrow is back. Today we have a special show bringing you some rookies and the value of rookie picks. You ready for this, Ash? You know it. I'm ready. Pumped. All right, let's get the shirts. Where's yours? I forgot mine. Throw me one. Throw me one. Now we are ready. So we're talking about rookies today. I am joined by the one and only college knowledge Ash Suggs. How you doing, buddy? What's going on? Uh, I'm glad to be back. It's been a long time. I felt like it's been years, but... People who don't know, Ash started the podcast, had to take a break with the baby, but I called him the other day. I said, Ash, this is college season. We need that knowledge that you have. I mean, that's your baby right there is college. You know more than, more than most, so it's exciting to get you on this podcast and talk some rookies today. Yeah, it's my favorite time of the year. So before we actually dive into like the players themselves, I kind of want to talk about the uh, position, like uh, the value of each pick. So, you know, you have kind of the tiers this year where this is a weird draft class. Uh, Traylon Burks, Drake London, Malik Willis, Brees Hall, Isaiah Spiller. You know, a lot of these guys can have a a good chance of being the one one depending on especially the running backs where they go in this draft class so like let's talk some strategies i guess if you have the one one are you really looking to use it this year absolutely i, I would there, so you think it's worth it to yeah well would you use it or move back I, I would use it because there's only one guy I really, really would love to have that I've got to have if I have the chance. There's just one, so I mean, I'd keep it. And, but uh, if you're needing another position or right, well, you're, you're who, drafting who, based off of team needs, I yeah, I, I may would. Who who would that guy be that is so solidified for you as a one one? I mean, that's that's big because I, I mean it's Traylon Burks. I mean, that's the only one I would take at okay. 101. The one. Even in, because we do super flex, 2QB mainly on this show. That's just what you should do for Dynasty. It's a lot more fun. So even in that format, you're going with Traylon? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I mean, you I know me, I, I went Kyle Pitts last year, number two. So. Right, right yeah. behind T Law. I like that take. He's off. the best player in the draft, I mean, to me. Yeah, we had that discussion kind of, um, you know, like a week ago about Traylon Burks, and we talked about for an hour just about his potential and how he looks like this Debo, A.J. Brown mix that can also pull in those contested catches like DK. I mean, just a very exciting prospect being used even in the running game. You know, up to sophomore year, he was kind of a gadget player, but then you watch his junior year being used in a whole different level. Uh, I... I 100% agree with you, but my thing with the 1-1 one, one is if you usually have that, you have a lot of holes everywhere else. So, like, what I'd be looking to do, and I usually do it every year, but more so this year, is I really see that teardrop at 111 in a 2QB league. Um, you can go 1-6, really, but if you can get, like, the 1-6 and on top of that get a 23 first for that 1-1, one, one, I don't even. I wouldn't even hesitate to do something like that. Um, that's that's the way I play, and especially with this draft, I still think they are close enough in the tier where it is easily worth it. Especially having the one one where you know your team has all these holes and needs. Yeah. Um, well, the the thing with the holes and stuff. Um, if you've got that many, I wouldn't be drafting running back yet because. They're good for what four years? Go ahead right. and get that Traylon Burks. That they're good for four. Then years, you can build but around them. Once they break out, you can flip them very easily. That's like oh, yeah. a That's Swift, true. a Javante Williams. Once they break out, you necessarily don't need to hold. It's just where does that stock end? You know, 
once uh, even Najee Harris, right? You, you probably don't want to keep him if you're in a rebuild and you have a ton of holes elsewhere, but you're going to get a ton for him. So there is that, you know, if running back right. is land in the right spot, then I would go ahead and have that fight for him. So we had this conversation, too, about the QBs in this, and you were telling me pretty much if two, three QBs get taken in the first seven picks, people are kind of, you know, drafting them too early in these two QB leagues. <clears throat> well, the quarterbacks this year, they're just, to me, there's only one that I can actually see having a career in the NFL, and that's Kenny Pickett. Um, Mal- Malik Willis, I, I like him. Um, he's got the rushing upside. Um, yeah, a thousand yards on the but, ground last season. And and he's but Kenny Pickett, I, I just wouldn't know, draft him early. I mean, I like him. Yeah, yeah Kenny I Pickett's going to leak definitely falling. But I think they're both top 7 picks. The thing about this is uh as long as they get that draft equity in that first round, you'll see at least two QBs go in the early first round this year. And with that, you got a guy like let's say Daniel Jones, um just a ton of different QBs that get to play year out, you know, you get a couple years out of them with that rushing upside, even if they don't do good, just because they have that draft equity, equity. So, you know, they're definitely worth that. But I can see also the argument where you can't see them having a great career. But at the same time, I look at QBs, they are so hard to scout. If they are not the hardest position, I mean, NFL people get paid millions of dollars to go into this pick and research it, and people still whiff on this QB position. I mean, it, it, it's the hardest player to scout, and you, I, no, no one can necessarily say indefinitely these QBs won't hit. That's why I always say, you know, those top two QBs out of the draft might have, you know, at least you got to draft them in the top six. Where I like to trade down from the 1-1 one, one to 1-3, one, Four and try to pick up an extra first or a couple extra seconds, trade down a few spots. There is a dead zone I'm seeing. You know, in one QB leagues, pick nine gets gross. There's just this giant teardrop to me. Um, just like last year when you had the teardrop of uh, from Javante Williams, I believe was like the one nine. Then you kind of had that Rashad Bateman, Rondell Moore. There was just that teardrop around there. And I'm seeing that very similarly this year in one QB leagues. Now in two QB leagues, I'd say it's around 111. So I would be looking to, if I have like the 112, 2122, I try to pay up a second to kind of move up a little bit and ensure a better draft pick. Or sorry, just a, a better profile. Cause that's where the tiers are in my opinion. So you're you're saying if if you're around the you said the eleventh to try to trade up? Yeah, if you're around that if you're eleven or below, that's that's kind of the pick I'm looking to trade up from. But besides that, with the tiers, I'm trying to actually move down before that. You know, if I'm in the one, two, yeah. one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, I am totally down to move down a couple spots to pick up some extra equity. But as far as the 111 goes, I see a tier difference there. So that's kind of where I'm looking to move up. That's when I'd pay a second yeah. to, you know, it's just that teardrop I wanted to point out, really. Yeah. I mean, I'd actually be trading for future then. I mean, I wouldn't. Right? You could probably get a 23 first and a 23 second. Because next year's class is so good. Right, but you could probably get a first and your second because people yeah. want to win now. The 23 class is going to be so much better. Right. The top five is where you want to be in this year's class, to me. Right. Okay. It makes sense. I, I can see. I mean, there's definitely some value. I just I see a lot of players in a similar tier. Uh, let's jump into just talking about some players. Is there anyone in specifically in this first kind of round you want to talk about? The running backs. And you're, you're speaking of tiers. How many do you have in the same tier as far as first three or four? Are they all in the same tier to you or – because I've got like four in the same same tier. You know, I'm right there with you. The first four running backs, it's all about draft equity and landing spot. That's why I don't want to like try to dive in and say, oh, I'm taking Brees Hall, then Isaiah Spill. Like, yes, I have Brees Hall number one right now, but so many things can change depending on 
pro day and how they show out in the NFL combine, you know, we know a little more about wide receivers, right? But running backs, those first guys could change depending on whatever team they go to, whatever situation, whatever equity and whatever pick they, they were taken. I mean, there's so many things to factor in running backs that we can't factor in at this moment. But like you were saying, those first four, you know, you got Brees Hall, Isaiah Spiller, um, uh, uh, Kyrene Williams, and Kenneth Walker, right? Those are kind of like my solidified four. Yeah. yeah. And after that, I'm not too appeased Man too. with that. Um, speaking about running backs, though, so what are your thoughts? This is kind of a guy I think might fall, which I really like. It's Kyrene Williams. You know, a little, little not, not of size. If he was a couple pounds heavier, you know, twenty, give him 25 pounds, he might actually have a lot more hype around him. Kyrene Williams, I haven't seen a back that can block as well as he has coming out of college for a very long time. He is a very good pass cat or pass blocking guy and as well as that you'll see him lined up out of the slot so how that kind of translates to the nfl is he'll probably be trusted very early on in his career i'm not going to say he's going to be a three down bell cow just to start but what that will bring for him is that he's going to be on the field for third downs um and going to be given opportunity right away with just his style of play. You know, being able to line out of the slot, being able to block so well. He's a guy you want in on those third downs. He's just a really exciting prospect. That's kind of why he's in that tier of the top four. Yeah, he, he's a very good well all-around back. Um, I agree with that completely. Um, and I'm kind of guilty of Notre Dame players to me. I just have bad feelings about all of them. I mean, I, I think they're always overrated, especially since Manti Teo, just Notre Dame in general. But I actually went and looked, watched a film on him, and, and yeah, he's he surprised me. He he does everything well. He's not the, the best at anything to me. So I got him to the bottom of the, the tier, but – He's right. That makes he, sense. He, he'll see the, the play in time. So those are kind of our, you know, we each agree on that. There's that like solid top four running backs and it's kind of, you know, could go any way with them for wide receivers. We do have a little more info. So we each have Traylon Burks, number one, but what are your kind of tiers on this year? Like, is it, you know, Drake London or Traylon Burks, Drake London, Garrett Wilson, I can see them all doing very well. Is there, you know, besides Burks, what's the, is there one close to his tier for you? Garrett Wilson. Uh, really? Garrett Wilson's, yes. He, his separation is, and wow. He's got really it's good pretty body damn good, dude. He's got really good he, body He's going to be controls. a special player, too. He's just, he's a little small, right? Six foot, 192. Although receivers, I won't say it matters as much, although I do like that size. But he had a 35% of his op, of his total offense his sophomore year. Um, being that he's just so good right off the line. And he's got he's, he's one of those yak daddies like CD was a couple of years. I mean, once he gets the ball in his hands, he will make plays happen. So he's a very excited prospect. But I don't... I have him and Drake London really, really close. I'm kind of, you know, I go back and forth between the two because um, Drake London had had a breakout age of 17 years old. Um, I mean, that's crazy. He's 6'5", 209. Yes, he did fracture his ankle last October, but he will be back. And his rookie year, he produced at 17 years old while playing with Michael Pittman and Amon Ross St. Brown. I mean, and yep. Michael Pittman at that time was 22 years old. So to be able to do it that early was crazy. Now the step up he And he made, had Tyler Vons too. Don't forget him. He was above correct. him on the depth chart. Yeah. And then it, his junior uh, 2021, he came out with 1,084 total yards um, out of um, 2,049 for his entire offense in the passing game. Now that's forty-five percent of the total passing yards. I, 
I mean, he almost took half the in total passing yards. So he's just, with that young breakout age, uh, there's so much to love about this guy. And the, the dominator rating of him is, is in, insane. Drake London's a unique player. Uh, you look at his build. You said he's like 6'5". You said 209. But that's, that's a little light for somebody being 6'5". It is. Um, it really but he is. is so smooth. He's a smooth route runner, and he. I, I don't know if I've ever seen someone at, at that size be that smooth. Yeah, he's very, um, he's actually probably the best route runner of this class. I mean, Burks, Traylon Burks, I love him, but that's not his thing. You know, he's contested catches. No. Yes, Traylon Burks can break off and make separation early. But no one's running routes like Garrett Wilson is right now. I mean, the, the his routes are just so yeah. impressive. Just his wingspan, Drake London, I mean, just that height, that's going to separate him from a lot of people at the NFL level. And being able to do the same stuff somebody at six foot can do, but but being 6'5". You know, sky can be the limit. Um, the last guy where I'll take – you know, this is where kind of a teardrop happens in the receivers, I believe, after the first three. But I still really like this guy. It's Jamison Williams. Just breakaway speed, great at catching the ball, and an all-around good prospect. Uh, I, I really hadn't dove into his game film yet. Um, with, with my life changes, I haven't had as much time as I would like. But I watched him. Alabama's always on TV, so... He's a great player. It, the one thing that bothers me about him is the fact that he did have to transfer. That kind of bothers me because he's got all the speed and he's a he's a better f- wide receiver than Henry Ruggs. Not quite as fast, but way more polished. If, if yeah, that makes sense, and, that's definitely a good um, way to put it. He don't have much size either, but he does have speed. And he's he's a question mark. He's in that different tier to me. But now where he's getting drafted, I, I don't know the ADP, but I would have him at the end of the first round. So maybe falls the second. I don't know. I mean, he he's definitely a risk. Who else do you have to pick down there? Right, exactly. You know that late first, early second round. He's like, he'll he'll be a great pick around there. There's one thing I kind of want to touch on, and it's just how horribly people are valuing picks this year. They are just undervalued because of how much this class gets hate. For the fact that you can get a guy like Keenan Allen or Mike Evans and get the 1-1, one, 1-2 one, one, from one of those guys, I think those are trades that you think you need to be trying out. You know, those Wait, guys you said three. who? Um, like Keenan Allen, Mike Evans, you could probably trade oh. them this year for the 101 one two. I even saw a league where Elijah Moore got it. The you got someone traded Elijah Moore for the one two. I'm like, well, the one two by far. Well, what I get this class isn't is below average maybe for most years, but there's still a lot of talent in this class. Uh, I think that's crazy. Um, uh, I'll admit. Last year, I wasn't very high on it, but I hadn't really dove into it. Um, Things but there's strange. definitely talent. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at so first, when ha- you said Mike Evans, for some reason, I was thinking Mike Williams, and I, <laughs> you screwed with me because I'm like, I got him in a lot of leagues. I will trade him right now right. for the 1-1. One, one. All right, well, he weirdly doesn't have that name value of a Mike Evans or Keenan Allen yet. But, I mean, yeah. those guys are just – they're they are older. You know, you might get another couple thousand yard seasons out of them, but the upside is nothing compared to what it is for a Burks, a Brees Hall, and Isaiah Spiller. Even a um, – at that point, if you could draft a QB, Malik Willis. I'd rather have him because you know he's going to get the same amount of years as um, – or Kenny Pickett. They're going to get the same amount of years – um, at worst of what Keenan Allen, Mike Evans will give you at 29 years old. So, at, oh, yeah. and that's QB where QB is much more valuable than the wide receiver position in a two QB league. You can go pick up a receiver off of uh, waiver wires. I did that with Mooney and um, Guyton and um, Dave Davis. You can find guys like that. Even Brashad Perriman was a league winner a couple years back. It's not really going to happen at the QB position. So, 
I mean, those are definitely the tier where I'm like, man, these are such cheap picks this year. I'm going to be gathering them at the prices they are. George Pickens and Justin Ross. I'd, I'd be keeping an eye on their landing spots, especially Justin Ross. He has been written off. Yeah, actually, you want to I don't think that that's a bit? good. Because I, I like that take um you want to dive in because he has really been written off he's not a first round pick he's maybe a second oh yeah um you're talking about pickens or, or ross no ross pickens is still on ross. some people's radar with ross i don't quite understand why he is so low uh his his uh freshman year he was the number one receiver coming out in this draft class but then there was a terrible neck injury or, or i believe it was a neck injury and he he's come back and I don't even know if people realize he came back this year. There's not much film out there that I can find on him, on just him, other than the Georgia game, Clemson and Georgia, and that was just it, it didn't go well for Clemson at all for anybody. Justin Ross did play good this year, and yeah, I, I like think he's going to be top three NFL uh, rounds. Yeah, he'll be. He should be a top three round pick. Um. At the very least, I know we've written them off at fantasy players, but you got a lot of people just diving into this first round and stuff. So that lets, yeah. you know, the hype go for some players and then other people are left forgotten. That's when you get a Elijah Moore mid-second, like last year. It's, it's Yeah. I, I like that. That's a good, good player to end on. So do you want to give us one sleeper for this draft before we go? Abram Smith, running back for Baylor. Because he's, he's probably my running back five. I think he falls right Ooh. outside. But he's a football player. I mean, I can't player. blame you. You got the top four. You can almost kind of add yeah. add players from anywhere. I mean, so I he, like was, like he was a linebacker at Colorado, transferred to Baylor, and became a running back. He was at the Senior Bowl. I think he scored like two touchdowns. In my yeah. mock, he was he's drafted to be Saquon's backup in the mock that I was looking at. Second round dart, hey, <laughs> maybe that's a good bat. Yeah, yeah, no, I like that, especially behind uh, an injury riddled running back. But uh, it just takes an injury for these late round running backs, or even Elijah Mitchell, where he just beat out his third round pick in uh, Trey Sermon. Um, so definitely, those late round running backs are good for ones. So I like that name. Uh,